Want to see how we doubled the runtime, the power, and the efficiency on my daughter's Dune Racer Power Wheels? Coming up, we're going to do a full detailed build video of my custom dual drill battery 18 volt lithium ion swap. We're going to go over the concept, we'll discuss a full parts list, and we'll provide you with a full list of links and resources down in the description. If you find any value in this video, if you enjoy it, or if you just feel like it, please like and subscribe for future content. Thanks for coming along for the ride. Spin that intro. Bow. I just want to preface this video and show you my initial concept and design. Please don't be too critical. It took me many weeks of hard work and research. It should appear right about here. Like I said, it was quite complex. So then I started looking for the key components for this design. And wouldn't you know it, I couldn't find them anywhere. I searched the interwebs, the dark webs. I searched the black markets and I could not come up with the key component. This guy, apparently it's kind of hard to get. So then I went back to the drawing board and I created a just basic wiring diagram for my power wheels. That should appear right here for reference. Also, we'll go ahead and include the initial wiring diagram from Havoc where he is another YouTuber who came up with the initial concept. He has quite a good video where he does this mod on a Jeep. Uh, here's his concept. So these wiring diagrams and concepts should help you follow in and build. I uh, hope you enjoy the rest of the build video. Thanks. All right, let's quickly go over the full parts list we're gonna need for this build. Obviously we wanna start with the 18 volt lithium drill batteries first. We're gonna use two of them. We're gonna need two cradles or docks that we will plug the batteries into. I highly advise the ones with the leads pre-installed. We'll need a PWM DC motor speed controller. This is what will control the output voltage to the motors. We'll need a low voltage protection circuit board. This is what will keep your batteries from fully discharging, which would essentially kill them. Uh, we'll need a terminal block. We'll need 20 to 30 amp inline fuses uh, with a 12 or 14 gauge wire pre-installed. Um, we'll do one off of each positive lead. We'll need a, a Molex quick connector. We'll need multiple Molex quick connectors. We'll need wire stranded. Um, prefer 12 gauge, but you could probably get away with 14 gauge just fine. And plexiglass. Uh, I used an eighth inch. You could easily use a quarter inch thick. Um, a 12 by 12 sheet's more than enough, but you could buy a bigger quantity if you want. Uh, eBay has many sellers for this, and you can actually get many colors for this as well. That's the full parts list. Let's go into it. This is my daughter's Dune Racer Power Wheels. Pretty pink and purple. Let's start with a little background on this mod before we get building. Initially, we got this Power Wheels used. It came with two of the block style Power Wheels batteries. Standard 12 volt, quite pricey batteries. And the one battery was completely shot the other one has very short run time. So what we decided is we, I was trying to figure out a solution. I started looking around online and decided, do I pay $100 for another Power Wheels battery that requires 18 hours of charge time and still a very long, limited shelf life and a very limited run time? So what could I do to make this better? So after searching online, I found a few solutions on how to properly mod the power wheels and that's to when run came up with on the idea for the flux 18 volt lithium drill batteries. So mostly all the mod videos showed a Jeep power wheels and they easily would store the two batteries into the, tr uh, the hood or the under the hood or in the trunk compartment depending on the model. Now the Dune Racer only has a small hatch compartment located right here. So how was I going to um, just neatly pack away those batteries? I saw a number of people who would just jam them in there and hook it together, but I still wanted to utilize the existing battery 
or be able to swap back and forth if need be. So I started working on a concept on how to do this. The first thing I came up with is where am I going to store the batteries? So as you can see, these two cradles house the batteries. These are 3D printed cradles that I picked up off of Am or eBay. I would highly advise to get the cradles that already have the wires in them. I did not, and then I had to drill them. And as you can see, quite a tedious task. I used standard 12 gauge wiring and used wire connectors eye hole connectors and then I bent them to fit in the battery sockets. Again, I only paid about $4 a piece for this, but I highly advise to spring for the pre-wired adapters. And of course, I'll add a link in the description to easily get acquire these. Now, what does the setup look like inside? Now let's dive into the design I came up with and why I came up with it. So as I stated, I wanted the, to be able to maintain and still use the standard 12 volt Power Wheels battery, but I also want to be able to run my dual 18 volt batteries anytime I want. And if I decide to someday sell or I wanna change it back or just run on the standard 12 volt, I can have that option. So this whole module in here will come out and slide in and out just like a battery. The first thing I want to do is take the power off of it. So inside I have my PWM power controller voltage regulator then i have my circuit board regulator and this is a key component that must be used to keep your lithium batteries from going to overrun them if you run a lithium battery to beyond a certain point and you run it dead it actually can kill the cell and the lithium battery is shot so either you have to maintain and regulate how long you run one or you put an over um, an overvolt board to regulate how far you run down the batteries. This board will know that when it gets to 16 volts, it will shut the, bat the, the circuit off and power will not go through it anymore. And that it protects the batteries from overdrawing them. So let's pull this out and discuss the whole layout and the concept. So I'm still utilizing the standard wiring harness off the power wheels. I never modified that. This has not been changed whatsoever. Each one of my cradle adapters is running down to a Molex connector. These ends can be cut off. I like to leave them on there just for better grip. These are standard Molex connectors. Again, I'll link these in the description. Here is my total build. So this is the adapter that matches the harness exactly. And how I acquired this is the standard 12 volt battery has it built into the battery. I had a second battery. So I took and pried, you just pry up on this plastic cap. This is a cap here. You can break this cap right off and you can take the stock power wheels harness out of it. I wouldn't do that if you have a good battery because you'll waste the battery. You need the harness on the, uh, the plug in a standard battery, but if you have a dead battery, it works perfect. If you don't have a dead battery, you leave this in your good battery. You cut right here and you put a Molex adapter right here. That way you can leave this little piece of harness here you leave it plugged into your battery. You have a Molex adapter right here, just like one of these right here. And then right here. And then on, likewise on this side, instead of having the nice same power wheels adapter, you have a Molex here. So then you're using a Molex to this to hook to the main harness here, 
where you're using this battery with this adapter still on it with a Molex to hook to the main wiring harness. All works out perfect. Now let's discuss this design. I just used simply, I measured the width of this battery so that it would slide back in the same way. I measured the height of the, ba of the, of the battery and made just, this is both just pieces of wood. This is just a scrap piece of wood, a scrap piece of wood, drilled through the middle, put nice long screws, three inches in there, connected this piece to this piece. I spray painted it all silver just to look a little better. Here's your power out to your main wiring harness. These are your two power ends. One goes to one side, one goes to the other side. Power comes into a nice tidy terminal block. Both power ends coming into one terminal block converts to just one wire out on each positive and negative. I used green because that's what I had. I would suggest sticking with the white and black scheme if you have your choice, if you're gonna buy fresh wire or using a red and black to match up. Red and black's usually a, a good deal too. And I'll, I'll link to some solid wiring deal in the description as well. So we'll run from the main terminal block, we'll run out to our in on our circuit board. This is for, again, this board serves the purpose of keeping your lithium batteries from running clear to dead. Then we run out, and from the out, we'll simply, I just have it wrapped around, nothing fancy, wrapped all the way around, and then it's going to the input on our voltage regulator. Here's our input, plus, minus, and then that way it can be regulated, turned up and down, and then it can push back out, and the back out's coming to this, to our main harness. This plugs into the main harness. This is what controls how much power we're giving it. This is full tilt. If you wanted to run this about the same as it was stock, you would just put your 18 volts to here, which is running you roughly about your 12 volts and keeping your speed exactly how it was. If you want to double the speed, you crank it all the way down and you're getting more than double power on this. These little buttons here will regulate um, how much your voltage is, how much your output goes, um, when it, and you can set your limit. So you would set your limit so that when it hits 16, it will cut off power. And then I have it at a one volt so that once it gets up back up to 17, it can kick back on. That's how it regulates the board. Now, if I want to run back to my handy dandy 12 volt big block, I just leave, move these out of the way. I tuck it in. I hook my main wiring harness. Tuck my two wires, and we're back in business on a standard block battery. These aren't actually powering anything. I don't have any batteries in them. They're just wired down through. Important part on these, each one of these is running a 20 amp fuse tucked way up under the wiring. There's one. On the positive lead, I'm running a 20 amp fuse on each one of these. And this is just to protect the whole system. And I have these tucked. This is kind of a difficult setup here because what I did was these are your standard, standard pieces, your little fake exhausts that come on this. And I took those both off and I basically drew this pattern, traced this pattern. I put this pattern on some quarter inch um, purple plexiglass. Then I drilled that in, and then I drilled my two adapters down into that. Let's take this clunky block back out of here. Get out of here, Power Wheels block. And here is our beautiful, it looks kind of like a flux capacitor. We're gonna put the flux capacitor Close up of all my wiring. Here is the, let's start from end. Input one is battery one. Input two, battery two. It's gonna route all the way around. 
Both are gonna hit the terminal block. Terminal block splits into a single wire out, which runs into my circuit board. Circuit board input. Then from the circuit board output, it's just running back and around and coming into my voltage regulator. Then it has an output from the voltage regulator to run into the main wires to my main output. So when I wanna put this back in, I just hook this up to one battery, this up to one battery, this up to the main harness, ready to go. Let's get a little closer up filming. This is one of the inline fuses that I had purchased for these and I get one running from each battery. This one is actually a 30 amp, but I'm running dual 20 amp fuses on mine. Um, this is a little bit of a heavier gauge. I think that you could easily run a 12 gauge wire through everything. Um, I've seen where people are using 14. I prefer a little bit thicker just for safety. Here's a nice close up of the flux capacitor. These are the plastic fake exhausts that I have replaced and where I have mounted the batteries. Right here is one mount and here is the other mount. What I had to do was I had to drill a nice hole through this and through the underneath plastic. And then I had to fish the wires a bit back through. That's a hole that's already in there, but I had to fish them up a little bit to get back to them. For my build, I used dual 18 volt um, knockoff Milwaukee drill batteries. They are both five amp hours, or at least so they state, but they are Chinese knockoff brand or batteries. And I believe I got two of them for just over $50. Um, and then I have so, such painted them, paint, I painted them pink just over top of all the labels because it just matches better. And since they're exposed, I figured might as well. Both of these have a slight use on them already today. My daughter drove it for um, 15 minutes probably. Battery number two. And now with this build, you can completely use it with just one battery. You don't have to run two. Since I am running both batteries in parallel, they are not increasing the total voltage going through. They're only increasing the total life of the ride so that they're doubling the length of power going through them, but not increasing the voltage. That's why it's showing 19.6 coming in when in reality when I have it cranked when I have the batteries fully charged it's actually reading 20.6 so we have it slightly drained down but as you can see if I test say I only have three lights and three lights they have a slight drain on them already from my daughter driving them once it hits once it runs to 16 it will shut off and it has a one um, one volt charge to where it won't come back on until it hits 17. And that's the circuit board doing the protection on that. Perhaps the hardest part of this build had to be the cutting the plexiglass. Um, what I did was I outlined it and then I used a, a Dremel to cut it. And then I used a Dremel sanding wheel to go around all the rough edges to make it fit. It's not exactly a perfect fit, but I didn't take as much time as maybe I should. And then the second part, hardest part of course, is fishing the wires from up here to through, and you have to fish them back. So they would be about right up here and you gotta fish them back and pull them through here. And then again, I put a Molex connector on each one, on each side for each battery for quick connect for this specific design. If you didn't want to be able to switch back and forth, you wouldn't even have to use the Molex connectors. 
you would just wire directly to it. And then you could also wire directly into your harness. You could just have this cut. I would highly recommend cutting that, putting a Molex connector one way or another if you're going to or not. That way you can disconnect if you need to. And that's the build. Let's put the batteries in and hear how it sounds. Probably hear because you want to see your power wheels go from this.